So home prices are down 0.2% year over year, and they're saying that, well, this is the first housing decline since the 2008 housing market crash. But wait a minute, haven't they been telling us home prices have been going down for about well, the last six months or so? And are we really going crazy over a 0.2% correction here? Let's unpack this. But first, hi, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any real estate questions, then let me know because I'm here to help. Have you seen the headlines? If not, well, here's just a couple. It's like a bunch of panic porn. But what confuses me the most is that we've been hearing all about this home prices being off their peak for a while now. So is it this more of the same? The answer is no. This is the real deal. This is a real housing price decline. The others, well, they were a trend. Real quick, take a look at this graph. Here's two years of data showing the pricing trend here in Massachusetts. You see how it goes up and hits a peak, then retreats? Yes, that's what we call a trend. And the ignorant idiots out there that have been talking about housing declines for the last six months are just that, idiots because they don't care to actually look at the data and analyze it. Sorry, it's a rant, but I do feel better. You can send me the therapy bill. So back to the 0.2% decline in housing. This breaks a decade long streak of housing prices going up. In February, we saw a 0.2% decline when you compare the housing price in February of 2023 versus February 2022. This is news. This is the first actual decline in prices. For true and fair comparison, you need to compare data year over year. The real estate market goes through seasons, with the spring market being the hottest in most markets throughout the country. Now, keep in mind that real estate is local, so you will want to check on what's happened in your state with better and more valuable information and checking in what's going on in your town that you live in. For example, here in Massachusetts, we actually saw home prices go up by 3.8% in February. Data is data, and this is really something we need to keep in mind. But I want to go back to the crazed news of a 0.2% decline. Why is everyone going so crazy over one data point as we go into the spring market with an environment of actually decreasing interest rates? I especially think it's odd when I think about the stock market and the narrative around that. Year to date, the New York Stock Exchange is down 2.7%, and this is after the 4% decline in 2022. It's gotten to the point that I have to go have a couple drinks before I actually sit down and read my 401k statement and what it's done in the last month. So we've seen a 6.7% decline in stocks since 2022, and nothing in regards to how we should stop investing or how we should be acting now and pulling all of our money out of the stock market. But a 0.2% decline is people screaming from the hilltops about how now is the worst time to buy. And by the way, I actually tackle this question of today is the most expensive time to buy in the last 50 years or so. The video is definitely worth a watch, and it's right up there, so take a look afterwards. I figured out the reason why there is complete pandemonium when it comes to real estate and a slowdown. And it's not just all about these people wanting clicks on their news articles or videos. Well, it's that too. You know what they say in the publishing world. If it bleeds, well, then it's going to leap. But it's because real estate is seen as a bulletproof investment. It rarely goes down. And we don't have daily or monthly swings like the stock market does. Heck, not even recessions necessarily make prices go down. In the last five recessions, home prices have only gone down twice. And we all know what happened back in 2008. And the other time, it was in 1991 when they went down by 1.9%. Not exactly earth-shattering. So what would it mean if home prices went down by 1.9% this year? For the person who buys real estate for the long-term investment, really won't mean anything, quite frankly. But let's dig into the numbers. Assuming a 2% yearly decline on a $500,000 house that a person put 10% down on, let's say they got an interest rate, I don't know, 5.5% and that taxes were five grand a year. So a 2% decline, well, that is easy. That's $10,000, which means an actual real loss of 20% on your money. And that's because you only put down 50 grand in this scenario. And for the record, it works if there's a 2% gain on the asset value, then that is really a 20% return on your investment due to the ability to actually finance real estate, which you can't really do in the stock market. But that isn't the end for real estate. We get to write off interest and property taxes. So let's assume the combined income is 100 grand for the people that bought this house. At the current tax rates, that would mean the couple would owe $13,234 in federal taxes. Okay, now let's look at the scenario if you own the house in year one, the interest paid on the loan is $24,600. Add in the five grand in property taxes and you're able to write off $29,600. 
Well, this actually just knocked you into a lower tax bracket, so congrats! And this would mean that your new tax liability would be $8,037 to the feds. In this scenario, yes, you are still losing money, but that $10,000 loss is halved from the favorable tax codes. I've said it before, but it's worth repeating. If you're only going to be in a house for a short term, think two years or so, then it makes zero sense to buy, and you should be renting. When buying real estate, this is a long-term investment in a historically stable industry. So why the craziness over a 0.2% decline? The best way I can quit it to is, well, my truck. It takes me to 150,000 miles being a reliable soldier. Point A to point B time and time again over the years. Then it leaves me hanging on the side of the road just one time, and I'm going to be hooping and hollering in a world of anger. If it broke down all the time, then I'd come to expect it and probably would make excuses for it. That's the stock market, ups and downs and wild swings. And we all make excuses saying that the investment is for the long term and to keep buying in those dips. To steal one from Chevy, real estate is the longest lasting, most dependable investment out there. And that's why there is craziness over such a small slip in prices. Again, keep in mind that real estate is local. Different markets, they're going to perform differently. Talking about the national real estate market is as dumb as talking about the national average for temperature today. It's completely useless. Also, in regards to all those tax dollar numbers, I'm not an accountant. Wondering what owning real estate would do for you and your tax situation? Then reach out to your accountant. And I can tell you that for me, though, the interest and the property tax deduction are a lifesaver each and every single April 15th. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next 9 or 90 days, then I'm your guy. I'd love to chat with you. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. Or you can also reach out to me at YouTuberealestateagent.com. Again, my name is Jeffrey Chubb, and I look forward to hearing from you. So until next time.